In my last video, I did an overview of the Katana Librarian app for Android for Boss Katana Mark II. I mentioned in the comments that I was probably going to buy the Katana Man Pro app and do an overview of that one. And I have. And we're going to go over that in just a bit. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. I almost jumped the gun on that one this morning because this isn't the first time I've tried recording this. This is actually the second time. And I got the app last night, started going through it, and I really didn't like it um, because I didn't know how to use it. And I started to make the video this morning going through it, and I tried something different with, like, the last firmware update because I thought maybe they hadn't really updated it because when I started, it would say in detected firmware 2.0. So I couldn't find some things, but I'll show them to you in a minute. Halfway through that video, I started to discover what I was doing wrong, and it's actually a pretty good app. So let's get connected to it here. We're going to go Katana Man Pro, and here we are. It opens right up, and it's showing my amp channels already. So up top here, you can see your boost button, mod, effects, delay, so on and so forth. And in this particular 80s hair channel, all of them are on. Now, if you want to select a boost, you just tap it, and you can make your changes in there. Now, if you want to turn it off, you got to long press it, and it'll shut off, and on same way. So that's that. Now, these buttons down across the bottom here, these ones, brown, EQ, assign, and whatnot, they have different functions, but we'll get that in just a second. Let's go up top right here in the three little dots. Here's are some of your system settings as far as the app goes. And we'll get into that system settings part in just a second here. For your options, you can keep screen on. You can screen rotate. If you turn screen rotate off, it will jump like that. I don't want it like that because that's not how I hold my uh, tablet. So I'm going to turn it back on. And it's going to switch back over to this. It makes it a little easier for me to see too. Also up in those options... You have your keep screen on while you're using it. Color list, change list, text size. You can, you know, increase for old old eyes like mine. And also, you can map key codes. I don't know about that. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. So, and you can show preamp controls. We'll go over that in a little bit. The general tab, it has Bluetooth settings. You can change your Bluetooth settings. Select your home folder. Now you want to select your home folder where you download your patches to. So select home folder. We're going to go to continue. Select existing. I've already got these. I have them on an SD card. So I've already got them loaded. So what you would do, you would select the folder. Let's say you select the SD card. And I would go Katana right here. Katana live sets right in the middle there. That's the one I have. And then I hit select. And I've got a lot of live sets in here, so it, it would take a bit to load those. So I'm just going to go back. So back over to general. Select home folder, read amp channels. Read amp channels, it's just going to read your amp channels that you already have set in there. Import file. Import files, it's going to import files from, um, from your home folder. We'll get to that part in just a second, too. Layout, you got two different layouts. You got your default, which is how it is right now, which is LEDs. And then you got classic, which is cool too. And then your system settings. This is where you have your line out options for your recording, live, or blend, just like in your system settings on your Boss Katana panel. And your different custom settings on or off, mic one and mic two. Go back up here, system settings, global EQ. This is where you can set your global EQ. You can also turn it on and off, but this isn't the only place you can turn it on and off. Turn it on and off. Look at your different global EQs, change the parameters, the output, so on and so forth. Let's just go back to that one. We're going to leave it off. And then about, it tells you all about it. We're going to hit that back button. So that covers the menu up there. Now, like I said, your boost. Here's all your boost options, your mod options. Over here is where you got your different selections over on your right. All your different options. And your settings right there. Now down here, where it says brown, that's your, your, your amps. So you click that one, and it'll show your preamp. 
And then here, you can select all the different sneaky amps. Now, if you hit it again, you have your panel. That's your amp panel. It shows your basic panel of the patch you're working with. Hit it again, amp type. Now, you can choose your regular amp types, and here's your cabinet resonance and your effects chain. Now, I haven't figured out if there is a way. I haven't found it, haven't figured it out how to do a custom FX chain. There might not be a way on this one. To change your amp, you just hit the amp you want, click the variation on if you need it. Too easy. Hit that again, solo. Here's your solo settings if you want to turn them on or off. Amp out, EQ on, EQ off, all that good stuff. Let's go back here. Sorry, is there anything else? And the preamp. Okay, these are your preamps. Once again, all your sneaky amp, brightness on, brightness off, and that's the clean button. When I first started doing this, I did not realize that you could get all those. I was wondering where everything was because I couldn't find the noise suppressor or the send and return. So let's go to the EQ1 button, and it's got all your different options here. Your noise suppressor controls, on or off. EQ1, whether you want to change to parametric or GE10. Hit it again. Shape. You can turn your global EQ on or off here and change your basic contours. Hit it one more time. Your panel solo controls, on or off, all that good stuff. Next, we will go over to assign, the assign button. Well, it's still stuck on solo, but when we hit that assign button, we get to choose which we want to do. You got your send and return, post amp, pre, uh, post reverb, series parallel. Hit it again. EQ2. Hit it again, EQ1, hit it one more time, and assign, and here is where you can assign all your foot switches, expression pedals, so on and so forth. How many times do I got to say so on and so forth? I feel like I said that probably about 100 times in the last video too. And lastly, amp channel. Here's all your amp tones that are assigned to your amp right now. And you hit it again, and... Pedal effects controls, hit it again. Your basic uh, default effects, you can change those if you wanted to. And your patches, here's all your patches. This is where your folder sends all your patches. As you can see, I've got a ton of patches in there. And I don't believe, let's see, amp channel. Oh, we'll go back over to patch. Let's, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna grab a guitar. So hit it again, and we're going to go to patch. We're going to find a patch. Let's find a patch here that I know works well, because some of these aren't all that great. Devin Deadhead. Oh, and look at that. We crashed. Fire it back up. Sometimes it happens. With this amp, more than librarian. All right. It took a second to uh, reconnect. Here we are again. Let's, let's just uh, 80s heavy metal. Now, you're going to get a warning if it was made in the Mark 1. So this is made in the Mark 1. We're going to load it to Mark 2 because I don't care. That's a pretty brutal 80s metal. See the still the night patches. Okay, so we've got that loaded. You can see up top right here, it's loaded. We're going to leave it. Let's see. Let's go to the, the tube screamer. Let's just see if we can bump it up a little bit. Because we've made an edit to it. So how do we save it to the amp now? Do we go to patch and we hit save? Okay, that saved it. But if we hit it, save it again, save TSL... Does that do the same thing? It does the same thing. So how do we assign that to the amp? We don't go to assign. We go to amp channel. Can we just hold it? Oh, look at that. Okay, so that's how you assign it. I just that's something I just learned right now. So if we go back over to patch, let's let's go back. That was 80s hair. That was my patch. 80s hair. I don't think it's gonna be in here. 
let's see, Guitar of War Tones, maybe it's in there. Nope, that's fine. Let's do this one. And we got it loaded. Let's load this one up. So let's go over back over here, amp channel, and we're going to... Let's drop it right back on here again. We're going to hold it. I guess you got to hold it here. There you go. So anytime you want to load it, let's go back over to patch. We'll do it one more time. One more again. Surf's up. <laughs> that sounds so funny in drop D. Or in D. So we go back over to amp and let's put it on uh i know i get this one saved let me see if i can do it with the mouse i'm gonna hold it oh and there you go beautiful so that's how you write it to it i want to see if i can import a patch general import file so i hit import file and i downloaded a file let's say let's get out of here for a second See if it'll take me to guitarpatches.com. That's where I was. Okay. Got let's let's get a corn patch going on here. We're gonna hit got the life. Download patch. It should save it to the downloads. Need storage access. Okay. I, I did a factory reset on this thing last night, so it's it's wanting to do all sorts of crazy stuff now. The patch is downloaded, so let's go back over to Katana Man Pro. And we'll go up here and we'll go to downloads. Let's see if it's in there. There it is. So we're going to click it right there. Do you want to import this? Yes. Imported successfully. An unrecoverable error. Connection. This is a known is a known problem. Nice. Okay. So we got We get disconnected. Apparently so. All right, I guess I got to turn the amp off and back on again. There we go. Go back over to patch. Let's find this corn patch. We went find it. Was it corn? JK. There we go. Corn. Doesn't sound like corn. Sounds like garbage. Nice. It crashed again. Pretty much gonna wrap this one up because I keep having issues. So every time I reconnect, I mean, this one, there's a lot of bugs in this one. I'm sorry, but there really is. As cool as it is, it's it's different from Librarian, and there's a lot less bugs in Librarian, and I don't have those disconnecting errors as much. Or, I mean, I rarely ever have a problem with Librarian crashing. But this isn't a bad option. I like it. It needs some fixing. It's not as, I guess, stable as Librarian. And you can't uh, move the effects chain around a bit unless I just don't know how to do it. But other than that, um, if I was to choose one, I would definitely choose the librarian. But this is not a terrible option. And it might even work better on iPhone. I don't know. Well, that's going to wrap it up. I hope I've given you a better perspective of both apps. And maybe you can figure out if you want one and which one you want and you want to go with. Sorry I couldn't do it for iPhone or iPad, but I don't have one, and I'm not going to borrow somebody else's and then buy the app again just to do two different ones. It's just it's not worth it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next time.